do all animals have 27 bones in their hands? Why do you think we might, but another animal might? My name is Allison Webster, um, and I am a teacher here at Confluence Academy, South City. This is my ninth year here, and it is my second year teaching the MySci curriculum. So our bodies are designed to help us do the things that we do. We pick up pencils and we write. It do we has been an absolute game changer in terms of science. Um, our old curriculum was literally reading from a book. Um, the focus was really on vocabulary. There was no hands-on experience. There was no bringing any of the science that we're learning to life. Um, and then my side is all about that. So we're learning the material, we're applying it, we're doing hands-on, we're watching videos. So I feel like we're encompassing all the learning for the students so that even kids who can't read are able to learn science because they are able to get their hands on and really understand the concepts that we are teaching and talking about. When you get a Valentine on Valentine's Day, is that what you're heard of? This, this is the real human heart. I mean, in math, we were like, think like a mathematician. So in science, we were saying like, think like a scientist. What would a scientist ask right now? Um, and they can definitely ask questions. They're really great at asking questions. Um, and then with science, I do notice we get a ton of questions because they're immediately engaged because they're able to apply what we're learning to things they see outside and in the world all the time. Um, we were talking about um, like hurricanes and natural disasters and things that affect our landscapes and they were able to connect it with like the news. We were, had heard about like the hurricanes and all the things that were happening. Um, so they, I mean, they instantly are thinking like scientists, they're talking like scientists, we're working on using the vocabulary. Um, and I say, I don't know, what would you do? You're the scientist and then they're able to kind of propel themselves forward a little bit more, especially in like the labs and things. I want you to compare and contrast the giraffe skeleton, not the giraffe itself, the, the way that my side has been set up that I've noticed so far is like you kind of read about it or I'm teaching something about it and then we maybe watch like a video or things and then so they're learning all this and they're learning new words but then to actually like see it in action and be able to apply it um, and then even like when I was giving the post test a kid would ask a question and say well I, I don't remember what and I was like just try to really think back to your labs I can't answer that for you and then instantly kids were coming up with things like oh it was acid rain oh it was the wind um, so they they are able to picture recall and remember better than if they just read the word wind or erosion they're not going to remember that but they're going to remember these labs that they're super into and were super engaging that they're able to complete and learn from um, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, so we are learning about the country of Guatemala. Um, and we were reading about it and looking at pictures, and we noticed a lot of volcanoes, we noticed some mountains, um, we'd read some information that there were some earthquakes. And I was like, man, all those words sound really familiar. Like, turn and talk to your partner. What do you, what conclusion or what inference can you make from this information? Um, and majority of the class was able to turn and be like, oh my goodness, it's like the plate, plate tectonics, they're, there's movement, they're on a plate boundary and like all that kind of information. So they're able to take what they learned in science and apply it to a complete different subject, which I, before my side, I've, I've never had that happen in my classroom, science to other subjects. Thank you for sharing. Okay.